Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We reach question number six, topic two, uh, mechanics, paper two. So let's read the question together. We have an elastic climbing rope, this one here, is tested by fixing one end of the rope to the top of the crane. Okay, so this is a crane. And we have a rope, and this rope is attached to the top of the crane. The other end of the rope is connected to a block. So we have a block here, which is initially at position A. So the block at the beginning was at position A. The block then is released from rest, is released. The mass of the rope is negligible, which means ignore the mass of the rope. The unextended length of the rope below without, without uh, this uh, mass uh, attached to it, uh, its original length without extension, okay, 60 meter from position A to position B. This is the original before I extend it, before I stretch it out. Then the block falls freely. At position B, the rope start to extend. So I have here extension down from, so this one will represent the original length, L, and this one will represent the extension, delta L or delta X. Okay? Calculate the speed of the, plo the block at position B. I need the speed at position B. Two ways to solve this question. Either I can use the conservation of energy or I can use Suvat equation or kinematic equation. So let's use the conservation of energy. And our initial energy will equal the final energy. So initial energy, because we're talking about the block, the initial energy here for the block at position A was gravitational potential energy, which is mgh at position A, and when the block moved till position B, all the energy converted to kinetic energy, which is half mv square. Same mass, so the mass can cancel from both sides. G, I can use 9.81, let's use 9.81, or 10, it's fine, they all, they all collect, times H, the length, the, the original height, which is the length of the rope 60. This will equal half times V square. Cross multiplication and find V. So V will equal square root 2 times 9.81 times 60. And this will give you 34.3 meter per second. This is method one and it's correct. Or I can use Suvat equation, or kinematic equation. Kinematic equation V final will equal V initial in, uh, in the IB books they use the simple U for the initial velocity plus two times the acceleration times delta X or displacement distance S. They use S instead of delta X. Now I like using V final square equal V initial square plus two A delta X, but since in the IB they use these symbols, so we'll stick with it. Initial start from at, at the maximum height, the initial maximum height, I don't have motion, so it's only gravitational potential energy. So the initial speed here at the maximum height at position A is zero. So initial speed, this one is zero. Two, acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. It's moving down, it will be negative 9.81, and displacement down negative 60. Take a square root both sides, and this will give you the same answer, which is 34.3 meter per second. B now. At position C, at position C down here, at this position, okay, at position C, 
the speed of the block reaches zero. The time taken for the block to fall between B and C, so this is time delta T. The mass of the block, this is M, the mass of the block 80 kilogram. Determine the magnitude of the average resulting, resultant force acting on the block between B and C. You have two ways. Either I use uh, Newton's second law for conservation of momentum or Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. So we can use force as I have a change in momentum equal change in momentum divided by change in time. That will equal mass, momentum, change in velocity divided by change in time, or, or you can use this immediately, force equal mass times acceleration. It will give you the same thing because acceleration, a change in velocity divided by change in time. And this will give you mass is 80, velocity 34.3 minus 0 divided by time, point seven hundred fifty nine and this will give you three thousand six hundred fifteen I can round it to three significant figure three hundred three thousand six hundred twenty in Newton. Okay now sketch part C of the question the average resultant force acting on the block between B and C. I have the weight down, it's already given to me. How we need to calculate the weight. Weight, it's mass times uh, free fall acceleration, and mass is 80 times 10, it will give you 800 in Newton. And I have another force, okay, up because of the rope, okay. Now, this force, or an average force up because of the tension on, of the rope, it will be longer, this force, or an average force acting because of, of the tension and uh, the movement of the rope. So this force will equal, we've just calculated here, 3,615, and this is the average force. 3,615 in Newton, and I'm going to draw it longer. The arrow should be longer than the arrow of the weight because the value or the magnitude of this force is bigger than the magnitude of the weight. Okay. D. Calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted by the rope by the rope on the rock. I need the magnitude, which means I don't, I don't care about the direction. I just own, I need the value. So I have two values. I have this force and I have this one. This one we rounded to uh, 3,620. So if I add the values of these two forces acting on the uh, block, acting by the rope on the block, so it will be 3,000 620 plus 800 Newton and you should get the, the, the magnitude of these forces. Okay, now part E of the question. Describe the energy change that takes place between A and B. Now, this is A. Here I have B, and then down when, when, when the rope is stretched, so this is C. At A, it's gravitational potential energy, and then the block fall down here. So the block was here, and then it fall down to position B. So the energy of this block now is kinetic energy. So I have gravitational Potential energy is at A, at position A, is converted to kinetic energy at position B. Now between B and C, 
between B and C. Between B, B still have height, which is delta X down here. So at between B and C, I still have height. So here I have gravitational potential energy and the block is moving. Okay, so it's kinetic energy. So this is at B. At C, since the block stretched, so the type of energy here, I have elastic potential energy and that will equal half the constant, Rob constant, times displacement delta x or an extension delta x square. Okay. Now, G, the length reached by the rope is 77 point meters. Suggest, you know, so they don't ask me to solve the, the question, just suggest a method how the energy consideration could be used to determine the elastic constant K of the rope. I can use any one of these cases. I can use the conservation of energy, any one of here between A and B, or between B and C, or I can use it between A immediately and C. And this is the simplest way. So if I use the conservation of energy, initial energy at A, equal final energy at C. Initial energy at A, it's gravitational potential energy. At C, because I have a stretch, so it will be elastic potential energy, half K delta X square. Okay, so I can find K from this equation. I have the magnitude of the mass of the block. I know the height. I have delta X, so I can find K. Okay, we still have time. Now we reach the same question now, H. Okay, now in another test, the block hangs in equilibrium at the end of the same elastic rope, the same rope. Okay, now I have the elastic constant of the rope. So this value will represent K. The block is pulled three point meter vertically between the equilibrium position and then released. So I have delta X. Delta X here. From the equilibrium position, which is at B till down, I have delta X. This will represent 3.5 meter. Calculate the time taken to return to the equilibrium position. Okay, now equilibrium position for what? You have to read the question carefully. For the first time. For the first time. Okay, I need here at point A, the first time. Now, at first, I have to find the period. From the period, I can find a time. How can I find the period? I can use the, this is for the high level student. I can use this equation, this formula, two pi square root, this is for a spring, mass divided by the spring constant. Since I have a rope, we can use the same formula because the rope uh, is being stretched. So this will equal two pi square root, ma the mass I have is 80, and the rope constant is 400, so period will give me 2.81 second. I, I, he doesn't want me to find the period, he wants me to find the time, so time will be the period. How many oscillation? From here till here, I have two oscillation back and forth. From B till C, I have two oscillation. So the total oscillation to come back to the normal position for oscillation. So it will be 2.81. This is the period divided by four, and this will give me the time, which point 700 uh, and two second. Last question, um, I need to find the speed. This I can use it. I can use two method. Either use the conservation of energy, or I can use V equal R times omega. R is this value, which is 3.5, 3.5, and omega is 2 pi divided by the period, and we have the period 2 